Hello, welcome to Managers of Management and our returning guest, Maria Jordan. Hello, Muriel. It's very exciting to get started with the meat of the topic and because last time it was just the introduction and getting to know each other and for the viewers to learn about the program. But now we're really gonna get into the topics and into what is management, what the roles, everything. But obviously always very simply and trying to make it very clear. I'm so glad because I had so many questions to ask you. Relating to last okay. week, you said that there were certain functions that you did, like you oversaw like, you know, the distribution of your, your products and everything else. Um, do you have to make decisions on these? Definitely. A manager is a decision maker and it's always addressing each situation and it all obviously mirrors, you know, in everything in life. Decision making has to, it's related to what we're looking at and what we're addressing. So I can't really go specifically in anything, but a manager is definitely a decision maker and obviously with help of others or by itself, depending on how it's working, if it's individually or as a group. With, with your decision making, how do you separate your own you know, personal opinion towards your decision, like to base your decision? That's on? very important, Muriel, because a manager, in most cases, should try to be partial because you cannot bring all of your personal and your thoughts into a decision making because you have to make sure you're making decisions for an organization, for a branch, for a company, for other employees, and you cannot be selfish in that way to only put in your interests. Because then it just messes everything up. Exactly. So it has to be very partial and relative. Because that person has to be open. And in when it comes to the job of being a manager, you have to kind of put aside for a second all of your personal things and everything and just be partial about the decision making process. Um, I know as a manager, you're not alone in this. Is there group management that you Definitely. Well, Muriel, there is different, as I was saying, there is different ways of approaching this. Well, some organizations take a individual management, and that would be, for example, if I'm the manager and I'm taking individual management, I'm managing my employees by myself, and nobody's helping me. But in some situations, there's group management. So, for example, you and I are managers, and we work together yes. to to make decisions and everything. So it all depends on what the organization is looking for and what helps the organization. Very, very important. Um, is the factor of time and your effort you put into the task at hand play a role? Definitely. Time is very important and that's going to be more of a topic in when we talk about change. Okay. So I guess we can leave that for later because that's kind of leading into a, another thing. But what is important to talk about is the change that was from what how management used to be to how it is now. Uh, I guess if you've seen movies, documentaries, or read, management has taken a huge switch and now the idea we have of management and how man the role managers play has changed completely. We used to see uh, employees as machines and as we can time them and try to everything about efficiency and effectiveness. And nowadays we understand that employees are human beings. Yeah, and not. that exactly we have we have laws. Exactly. And this takes us to an important term that is bounded rationality. And this is understanding that we're human that we have certain characteristics and that we cannot be perfect. So it cannot a human cannot be completely rational. Right. That makes sense because not just one person, you know, can come up with all these solutions to the to the problems that are exactly. happening. It takes more than one. Exactly. And that goes into a group or whatever and you want to manage it. But it's understanding that sometimes we have to satisfy with what is good enough, which is not what we usually 
want to do, satisfying, but a manager, it has limitations, boundaries, and sometimes we have to say, okay, it's the boundary rationality which teaches us that it's, we have to satisfy sometimes because we're human and we cannot be completely rational. Hello, welcome to the show called Managers and Management. Throughout the show, we will be explaining certain key factors within business and the manager's roles with these tasks. Um, each week, we will have a guest to join us and who is an expert in these fields, and the guest is known as Mariana Jordan. Hi, Miriam. It's a pleasure to be here. Welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm very excited when I received the call inviting me to make part of this show because as manager, it's not only a job that I love to do and I'm passionate about, but it's amazing to help others learn about what management is and give them some tips on how to manage or what do managers do and what the manager is. I'm so excited because there are still some things that I am completely unaware of or that are unclear to me that I'm pretty sure you can help me answer throughout exactly. this series. And you are going to learn so much throughout this and don't be afraid, it's not complicated. We're going to be covering everything very simply and so everybody can understand and it's not going to be a lecture on management, we're going to be having conversations on different topics and what managers do, how do managers think change, or different, how do they work with certain employees and personalities, all of these things that do not seem that important, but are extremely important when it comes to management. I'm so glad now I can ask questions and not worry about the consequences between them. Everybody, if you have any questions, email us and we'll include this in the episode and we'll try to be as clear as possible and give examples so everybody can understand the topics. And each week we'll be uploading ep an episode, so if you missed out, you can always go back and watch and then... Yes, there's just every, every week we're going to have the episodes showing on TV, but as Miro was saying, if you missed it, just go on the website and you'll find the episode. And if you have any questions, don't worry to email me. And it's it's easy as that. Exactly. So starting this show, Managers Management, what is your role as a manager? Well, I've had several experiences as a manager. Right now, I'm working in an international company organization, which is called Payless Shoes. And I'm just I'm not the head manager of Pale of Shoes, but you're still but an important manager. Exactly, I'm one of the managers in one of the branches of Pale of Shoes in one of the in, one, in the United States in one of in one of the places. But how you know, Pale of Shoes have been growing, and it's an international organization, and they have it in many different countries. In fact, they have it in my home country, which is Colombia, and they have it in many other countries. So there's many managers involved in this organization. Definitely. Um, what are your roles as, your, as you are as a manager within this branch? Well, but I, I have a certain job and I have to look over that everything is going correctly with the stores. So I'm basically more driven into what's going on with the stores and the employees and making sure that the products arrive on time, that everything is uh, appealing and everything for the sales and that everything's working fine when it comes to selling our product. That's you sound like that is one of the most important aspects. Like you cover so many fields but you're aware of all of them. Exactly. Which is important. Well every part of the process is important. Making managing the making is important and managing the result is important as well. And what happens Muriel is that I'm not doing this alone. There's the employees and people that I work with are helping me and we're all working as a group to make this happen and to make, help the sales and everything go as we are planned and as we expect. So what I do as a manager is that I help, I'm a leader, I'm, I make sure that everything is working how it's supposed to, but always trying not to be forcing and controlling, but trying to just always no matter what, it's looking for the results. So 
I guess we're going to get into that in another chapter. Yes. But let's just say that I'm going to try to come with my experience to answer your questions and see what I can help you with with the topics of management. And I'm definitely looking forward to that. Thank you very much and please watch the show. Yes. Thank you. Have a nice Hello, welcome back. And we have our returning guest, Mariana, today. Hello, Muriel, as always. It's a pleasure to be here and it's a pleasure to, as manager, help others learn about management and management. I'm so happy that you it has, it has become very important and it's important for viewers to have a moment to say that they just, even if you do not want to be a manager, there's things that you just are going to be very useful in life. And, and you might actually start to see around you. Exactly. Um, today, I believe we're going to be talking about intercommunications and personal. Interpersonal yes. and communication skills. And you're going to see why, and I'm pretty sure most of you already understand why communication skills are so important. Because when it comes to be managing, or many things in life, most of things in life, communication skills definitely change the outcome of things. And it all depends on how well you communicate and how well the outcome can be. Because a bad communication can deliver the wrong message or can have a negative outcome. I do know this much. There is two kinds of communication, and that is speaking and writing. Exactly. Um, uh, is there a certain one that you think is more effective than the other? Well, Muriel, when it comes to management, you, it's, I was taught that writing is a very, it's a way of communication that is stated. You have something in paper and it's not word of mouth. Exactly. It's something that it's not going to be, it's something that you have constancy of. It's something that you can prove. It's something that you can save. Clearly, nowadays we record, we film, so voice could also be as powerful as writing. Yeah. But as manager, I do suggest that there is always good to have the writing copy, and writing gives us the time to think, to analyze, to put our thoughts into words, and to just look it over. Sometimes when we talk, we are having a conversation and it's all going at that instance. So I'm talking right now, but I cannot analyze what I'm going to say. And it's just coming all right at once. When I write, I can go back, look, and make corrections or take my time. But when you're having a conversation, it's immediately. However, I'm not saying a oral communication is not good because in some cases, something very positive of it is that when we're having a conversation, you can respond to me. And it seems more personal, so it's like, you know, that you have the respect to approach me and talk to me about these things. Well, mm -hmm. but it's the perception of who you're exactly. talking to. Because respect, that respect is going to another topic, and writing is something very professional. Mm -hmm. But let's not go into that. But, uh, for example, when you're talking to somebody, the good is that I can see your face and I can see the reaction you're having to what I'm saying. Right. So I can see I'm saying something that bothers you or something and respond to that immediately. When I'm writing, you sometimes know. I don't know if that arrived or... So there's many pros and cons in both types of communication. But it is important to not forget that writing it is. We're forgetting nowadays sometimes that writing it is an important way of communicating. It is formal and it is something that you can save and have with you. And definitely having time to think what you're saying to somebody is very important. But oral communication is as important as well. Yeah, so I believe they're both equally important. Exactly. Yes. It all depends on what you are communicating. Right. Depending on how serious it is, how personal it has to be, all those factors uh, like lead you into making the choice of how you should communicate. And sometimes you can communicate in both ways communicate orally and always have a written response or statement to what's going on. I agree. I, agree. I, I was confused earlier um, when you say writing is really important. Like, there was this game I used to play when I was younger. It was called Telephone. Within business, I mean, you have these written statements, but I know the manager has the system of people that go through and correct and make sure everything is, you know, specialized and completed correctly. 
But with telephone, it's kind of the same thing, but you whisper something to somebody in a circle and they repeat the phrase through each person and it gets back to the person who originated the sentence. Yes, definitely. Yeah, and they, remember the game. Yeah, and it, it can mess you up or it can come out correctly. So it always, like, made me wonder how do they act, how do they make sure it's correct and it doesn't get messed up along the way. Okay, well, that's something that it's something that you have to know. But, um, a manager has to know that there's going to be, in managing it can be with employees and everything, it's going to be, we call it telefono roto, and it's just going to be people are going to talk and sometimes employees, and that's when trust comes and everything, because employees must start saying uh, whispering things, and then it might be that the manager hears something that is true, or it might be definitely off. So there's when a manager has to be on top of its game and know how to search for this information and how to play or understand these communication skills. Because it can, can be something that is not true or it can be something that is true. So it's something you have to be careful about. That's very true. Well, it seems like we've run out of time, but I'd like to thank you for joining us again today. Thank you. And this was the thing you And this ends the season of management so let me say it was a pleasure to be part of the show and i guess i'm always watching your show i think it's going to be science or something topic coming next so keep watching please and i hope you learned a lot about management thank you very much thank you hello welcome back to engage management i'd like to welcome moriana once again thank you and it's a pleasure to be back in the episode and talking this time about Motivation, trust, and leadership. Um, are these key factors in management? Definitely. Definitely. How so exactly? Well, leadership, we can start with leadership first of all, and you can help me out with this topic. Okay. Leadership is fundamental when it comes to managing because one of the characteristics that a manager has to have is leadership. So that just, I guess, our viewers definitely understand the importance that leadership plays into this. And motivation is really important because it all depends on how an employee feels and everything that is going on to what the job is done like, you know? And depending on how that person feels, their emotions and everything, and how well they do this job, it's gonna affect the organization sooner or later because a, if the job is not well done, well, we won't see the results. So a way to have better results and to have happy employees, good organization, everything is by using motivation and motivating a, the employees. And there's definitely different ways of motivating. There's, you can use awards, giving them like a, a awards with the can be money or trips or just rewarding them. Also, um, I think about um, trust, like interpersonal relationships. I think that's really, really mm -hmm. important with anger management. Definitely. <laughs> a, a, when an employee trust their manager, mm -hmm. there's this connection of trust. You want to force yourself, like you want to thrive to do. Exactly. And when there's trust, the manager can learn more about the whole of the organization. Mm -hmm. than, can probably learn more about what's going on a daily basis and the problems that maybe they wouldn't know of if there wasn't trust. Right. That kind of goes back to like leadership. I think I see it as the driving force behind management and the management. Like they need to be able to set examples to their employees. To be able to influence them. In the, the relationship management with their employees is always it's very beneficial when a manager has a good relationship with employees because when the way we see management change and we no longer see humans as machines but as human beings, we have realized that having this relationship and seeing this as a human with characteristics, feelings, and everything, it changed the situation and the success or whatever we're looking for in the organization and motivating and being a leader and creating a bond of trust helps all these factors. It's, it's, it's kind of sad. I really wish what we're talking about now actually applied to nowadays 
we see the people now and they seem to be either lazy, like they don't want to work, or they only work if it includes benefits that benefit them. Well, I guess we shouldn't generalize on those, but it is true that in some cases we can see that, but then that's why we're saying it all depends on the manager and the manager who can change this, they can improve this or make it worse. So the attitude the manager has and if the manager is a, what we are saying today is that if the manager is a leader, if they motivate the employees and if they create this bond of trust, it is more prone to have more, more success and a better relationship with the employees and everything. So the outcome is overall better. Yes, definitely. So I guess this is it and yes. it was just something very basic that we thought was very important for the viewers and everybody that has been looking at the show to have in mind and know that always when you're a manager, be a leader, motivate and create trust. Yes. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. See you next nice week. Big five model of personality indicator. And 
I have personally been, I work with tests, I think it's very important, and it's a very good tool to learn a little bit more about the employee or somebody that you're going to hire, or people that make part of your organization. I think it's become very common um, in most of these occasions to have these tests in the application process. Exactly. It has become very common nowadays. So many of the viewers have probably or heard about it or experienced taking one of the tests. So it, in a way, is very good for a manager to know more about the employee's personality, to know if they're hiring, first of all, the right person, or to know how to deal with this person, or how to place this person in the organization. Because that gives you a better possibility or of placing that person in the right job or in the right department as we were talking when we talked about the digitalization a few weeks ago. It seems so complicated, but the way you explain it to me, it starts to become more clear. It's just very important is uh, some other topics that we cover, as is this one, seems very mundane, seems like something very obvious. Yes. But it's something that when you're a manager, attitude and personality become extremely important and you're working with employees, many of them in most occasions, and you need to use tools as a test or to know how to deal with these attitudes or to, to know what type of employee you're looking for. I'm sorry to say we're out of time, but I would like to thank my joining us again today. It's a pleasure and we'll be talking about um, motivation, trust, and leadership on our next episode. So. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Thank you. Today we are talking about change in this episode of Managers Management, and we have our guest speaker, Mariana Jordan. Hello. Thanks for having me back. Yeah, I'm really excited about this topic. It's kind of scary, but it's an important topic. Definitely an important topic for people that are interested in about management. When we propose the topic of change, is this something that you're familiar with? Definitely. A manager has to always be prepared and be aware of the public, of the changes yeah, always yeah, present yeah, yeah, when it comes to management. Um, do any external sources affect change within the companies? Well, as we have seen with the other topics, external change is always really important and external forces always affect what is going on in our organization and it affects different in a different ways. But I guess we should go back a moment and talk about organizational change, which is very important for this lecture, we'll say. Organizational change is the alteration of any Thing in the organization and the people, the structure, anything you can think of, but it's a change that happens in the organization. And I'm sorry I interrupted, I just got really hoping to go back to that. No, that's, that's absolutely correct. I'm sorry that I took the It's okay. And I guess many of you might be wondering do every manager deal with change? Yeah, are there certain are there certain managers that are specialized with this? Well, let's say that every manager has to deal with change, but there is a title that is a change agent, but this title applies to all managers. So it's not really specifically like, oh I'm Mariana and I'm the change agent. No, it's just something that applies to all of us. So it's kind of like a disguise in a way. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. I know it can sound scary because when we deal with change, we are not aware or we might not be prepared for what's coming. Right. And when it, you're a manager, you have to try to be always researching and with your eyes wide open and searching and aware of everything to be uh, trying to prevent any anything that you are not expecting to happen and affect the organization. But change happens like this, and that's why managers have to act fast. I think that's very important. I understand, because when I hear change, I can start to freak out, because some people aren't adapted to change so fast. Exactly. And but as a manager, that's why manager has always has to act fast and be prepared to act upon change immediately. And I guess something that we should mention are the consulting assistants. Because even though 
I'm not recommending that you always use a consultant assistant. It's something that exists and it's something that our viewers should be aware of. So there's people that are consultant assistants and managers sometimes hire a consultant assistant to, for that person to, to look at the organization or whatever they're asking for help in and give advice. But what you should know is that in most cases, consultant assistants are more, uh, they're probably going to take more drastic changes. So sometimes this is not the best option to bring an outsider into making one of those decisions. However, the consultant assistants do not make the decisions. They only give advice. They say what they think, they, they diagnose, but they do not solve the problems. Well, that being said, how do you make a change happen? Good question, and that's why it gets difficult because a manager is dealing with employees. And there's just so many. Exactly, depending on the organization, obviously. But some people, are, as you were saying, are not that adaptable to change. And when there's a change really that happens in an organization, a manager has to pretty much help the employees and make this change happen successfully because if not, it can be harmful for the organization. So one of the ways that I would suggest and put up there is making this change appealing to the employees and even to the consumers and the customers and everything. Making this change seem appealing to everybody. And obviously, if somebody does not appeal to something, they won't be prone to helping change happen. Mm -hmm. um, have you been in a situation where you had problems yeah. trying to make change happen successfully? Oh yeah. Yes, Miriam, of course. It's learning and being a manager is a process and facing the situations as we were saying, change is one of the most important topics to talk about because change is one of the most difficult things a manager has to deal with definitely. So it's not easy and as a manager I've made mistakes, I've had to learn from my mistakes and However, I did not, as we have said before, I did not give the examples of my employees because that would be a break in the trust of what I have with them. But I can tell you that it's difficult to make change happen, but there are ways and there are keys and tips that managers have to have in mind and in their pockets ready to use and ready to make change better. So what do you do when this happens exactly? Well, there's different ways. As we said, one of them is making the pin. So like a offering benefits of some sort? That's another. So like you can make it appealing by making, for example, showing the purpose of it. So if you show that it's going to be beneficial for the organization or beneficial for the employee, that's making it appealing for everybody. And if you can also, for example, if you if the manager sees that it's really difficult for some employees to accommodate to this change, they should help them in a way that they could defer them to a counselor there and this person help them deal with change. Uh, another way that this is different would be getting to an agreement. However, just because an employee is not going to change, that doesn't mean they're just going to be an agreement. Agreements happen when it's, for example, an organization with another important uh, mass let's say, a, that is not appealing to the team and they would have to come to an agreement but it's only if it's a larger case in which it's a really important person or organization that you have a connection with. Okay, so these are some important keynotes. Um, they seem really appealing as well as mysterious. Exactly. And this one. Uh, let's just mention some, there are two ways that managers can use if the other ways don't work, but let's say that there are ways that you wouldn't want to use first and that managers don't really want to use well, most, I would say. And these are um, by making it attractive. And when we say making it attractive, we're pretty much meaning lying. So in some cases, if you see that it's impossible to, for somebody to change or adapt to the change, it, it would be making it attractive so that we make up on this change. Or, last, <laughs> forcing it. We would have to force change if the person does not want to help.
can be that can be actually really negative because we see other studies do so that could really affect the organization and the relationship with the employees. So I guess it's just using trying to use the other ways better. Um, yeah. Speaking about jobs and all of this change after um Exactly. We're gonna cover this in another episode, but what is really important to mention right now is that one of the ways to prevent somebody not having a good reaction to change is by showing a realistic job for you. If you show somebody the job that you've given them and the job that that person has better idea of what they're getting into. So that would probably diminish the probability. But well, it seems we've run out of time, but I'd like to end my ask during the day. Thank you for having me. It was a pleasure to talk about Chin. And I hope all of you understood how important it is, but don't be afraid. Just know that there's certain things that you can have into consideration when you're a manager and use these tools to make change easier on the organization and the employees. Yeah, or because it's always changing. Thank you, and we'll see you guys next week. Yes.
ma there's many factors that are that like a manager has to take in consideration. But for example, one of the types of different compensation that a manager can decide to apply is the product capitalization, which as the name it makes it clear is putting the product a group depending on products. Wow, that was that was very intriguing. I'm so glad that you was yeah. were able to. I think it's important that once the viewers understand what the presentation is, they will start. You guys will start definitely seeing this in other organizations or in stores, whatever. Every, every time you go in the store, you're going to see that it's clothes department, the fragrance department, and all these are things that you don't see. But the manager has grouped people together to work as a group in for this, for example, in this case, product and makes helps the organization function better. I also believe it it kind of appeals to us too when we see things that are specialized exactly. in these departments. It attracts us. It is very hard to for somebody to work on all the aspects of a company. So why that's why we create departments in which people are grouped and have this special job. Because I guess we know a human being cannot just go on and manage a whole company and go in detail in every in every department of the company. So I hope you guys have understand the topic of over the organization. And thank you for joining us again today, Maya. I hope to see you next week.